okay lecture 6b the first of thermodynamics and we will be talking about the specific heat in this lecture uh, continuation on anyway continuation of the uh, the previous lecture lecture number 6a uh, specific heat and relation between the temperature and the heat change heat changes uh, uh, topic is in a one while in uh, Bonnack and Sondek topic 6.5.6 6, uh, that would be in a previous uh, Previous version, but uh, in your own book, that would be a little bit different. Uh, till now, what we were doing in our lecture was actually finding a relationship of work done always. Uh, in our uh, previous lecture, which was the first law of thermodynamics, we did define the relationship of the heat transfer, which was Q, delta Q would be equal to delta U plus, sorry for that thing, um, delta U plus delta w so this was the uh, a little bit equation for the heat transfer but we did not define itself uh, the equation of the heat transfer what it actually heat transfer if you remember the first um, few lectures the, we did define the heat which was the the a function of the temperature difference so if we are talking about the heat transfer we would be talking about the change in the temperature so what would be change in the heat that change in the heat would be proportional to the change in the temperature so so that mean like delta delta q would be equal to any constant and that would be equal to delta t so now that mean like this is actually a simple heat transfer equation a simple heat transfer equation now what actually this c and now this is definitely a constant uh, what we call it proportionality constant and that depend on a substance so you can imagine like you it cannot be the heat transfer in an iron or the change in the change in temperature in an iron would not be equal to the change in temperature in a, in a wood or something so that means like a heat transfer if you are if, if you are supplying the same heat transfer to an iron or if you are supplying the same heat transfer to a wood actually that would definitely not equal so that mean like the c is depending on the the substance itself now the thing is like itself you can imagine like now the the question would arise what actually q what actually the c is whether it's a path dependent property or whether it's a state dependent property if you can imagine like q it's a path dependent as it depends on the the process itself if you define t actually it's a state property and it depends on the state only so what about the c itself you might have heard two two different cost, constant of proportionalities that is actually a specific heat if i can simply define that we would define it a specific heat constant actually one is actually cp and one is actually cv you normally would call it as a specific heat at constant volume and specific heat at constant pressure so that mean like if if you are saying like specific heat at constant pressure so this constant pressure itself is a path so that mean like specific heat is a path if you are saying like specific heat at constant volume so that that constant volume itself is actually a path and you can imagine like cv would be a path function but can 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 we just move around and move on so we can actually imagine like uh, whether it is a, a path function or a state function so let's let's have another look um, and let me define as a as you can imagine uh, in a previous um, few few notes you internal energy and specific let's let's move on to specific at a constant volume internal energy as a function of tv internal energy as a function of pv internal energy as, as a function of as a pt let me for my own easiness and for my own derivation let me find let me take the internal energy as a function of temperature and volume and let's differentiate um du in a in a, in a chain and rewrite the equation like this so that me like change in internal energy du that would be d, du by dt into dt and du by dv into dv as a function of temperature and as a function of volume so using the chain rule i can actually expand the equation something like this i've got another equation and that is actually in, of the internal energy 
I've got another equation of the internal energy which is equal to internal energy is equal to Q minus W or if you, if you, in our previous uh, we said like uh, first of thermodynamics uh, for the cause equilibrium process Q minus PdV as we did that we are talking about the constant volume process so if you are talking about the constant volume process so this term would be equal to zero and also this term would be equal to zero so that means like change in internal energy would be equal to dq at a constant volume process and change in internal energy would be equal to this relationship at a constant volume process so in other word dq which is actually this thing would be equal to this bit so that means like dq is actually equal to this one dq by dt is equal to du by dt now so at obviously our 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 relationship what as a at a constant volume so that means we will be talking about the constant volume so going from dq by dt you can imagine dq by dt somewhere here so that means like it's a constant so that means cv would be equal to change in internal energy by a function of t at a constant volume process now let's look again to this equation if you can look at this one internal energy it itself is a state function temperature itself is a state function so any state function differentiate with respect to another state function would be again a state function so that means like from this equation you can say like the cv is a state function rather than the path function but let's move on to the other one specific heat at a constant pressure process using the h enthalpy and enthalpy at a function of temperature and using the similar uh, steps you can define cp is equal to dh by dt at a constant pressure process again h is a state function again t is a state function so again we will say like a state function partial de derivative of a state function with respect to another state function so that mean like cp is again a state function so in derivation of the cv we consider only constant volume process so hence specific heat at a constant volume so it is more useful however to think cv in term of definition at a certain partial derivative which mean like a derivative with respect to another function or a function a uh, state function with respect to another state function and uh, similarly with the with the cp as well we did derive one state function with respect to another function state function so in fact these derivative above were defined at any point in any quasi static process it was rather than actually at a constant volume process it was not at a constant pressure process or any other process that mean like in a derivation we did say like we were using the constant volume and constant pressure but itself this derivation when we got the derivation it was not a function of constant volume and constant pressure so in other words cv and cp are thermodynamic properties which depend on only states so that in other words these are called as unfortunate misnomers what we call it as mis misnomers misnomers are like these specific heat are cp is that actually given a name which is not a correct name or cp cv is actually given a name which is not a correct name these are misnomers it is does not depend on cv does not depend on volume cp does not depend on pressure but only and only when we were deriving them we use constant volume and constant pressure themselves it does not depend on volume and pressure so what actually i mean to say like if you can actually go down there change in internal energy now from the above is equal to cv delta t change in enthalpy would be equal to cp delta t so now you have got this equation of change in internal energy change in enthalpy you can use these equation in any of the process it is not restricted to constant pressure 
and constant module. It is not restricted to any path, but it is actually valid for any other any and any other uh, process as well. For a small temperature changes around like 200 Kelvin, it is all often assumed like CV and CP are constant. If you are if you have got no so much temperature changes, I mean 200 Kelvin under 200 Kelvin, you can imagine like CP and CV are constant. But yes, uh, like later in our um, power plant, power plant one and power plant two, we will be we will be studying. So CP and CV are not taken as constant as the temperature difference is going further. The CP and CV are changing. So these are definitely not constant as well. Um, one important relationship we can find out for using them is actually relationship using ideal gas equation. Um, H is equal to U plus PV from the previous uh, equation. Uh, PV is equal to RT uh, is equal to RT for the ideal gas equation. Uh, you can just put the RT in here. So H, H is equal to U plus RT. Differentiating uh, and substituting we have the H is equal to DU plus RDT and TRD. So if T is constant, so uh, obviously that 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 um, part would be gone. Uh, DH is equal to DU plus RDT. So DH is equal to from above there, DH is equal to CPDT, uh, DU is equal to CVDT and RT over here. Again, uh, taking uh, DH is equal to CV delta T, D, DU is equal to CV delta T, uh, taking T common, so that means like it's gone, CV minus CP, CP minus CV would be equal to R. Uh, then the, you might have seen another equation, which means like gamma is equal to CP by CV. In general, for substance other than ideal gas, obviously these are equations which can depend on many other things. Does not only depend on the pressure and uh, temperature. So the ab above relationship, um, they, they are does not apply uh, other than the ideal gas. So ideal gas is definitely a special case. Uh, many other equation that will be actually having different properties, having comp complex substance. So yes, for a simple one, you can use these equation, but but for not for a complex one, we will be actually relating them. Uh, we will be having different equation there. Let's move to an example. Example 5.6 uh, that might be in your book. A cylinder fitted with a piston has a volume of 0.1 cubic meter and a contain 0.5 kg of steam at 0.4 megapascal. Heat is transferred to the steam until the temperature is 300 degrees centigrade while the pressure remain constant. Determine the heat transfer and the work done in the process. So the work done would be the work done of the co constant pressure process going from state one to state two. So if you can imagine the work done equation would be equal to T V2 minus V1. And if you are talking about the mass and the total volume so obviously there is a ma mass involved as well so you just check it uh, you can you can easily understand that one um, for the heat transfer so obviously heat transfer would be equal to change in internal energy plus work done and obviously in a last last uh, lecture 6a we did say like the heat transfer in a constant pressure process is equal to change in enthalpy so that means like h2 minus h1 we did define that one uh, equation so we will be using this equation which is actually quite easy um, now from this equation we can have a volume which is actually v1 so volume v1 is equal to 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.5 that is equal to 0 0.2 somewhere um, and a steam at and a pressure which is actually 0 0.4 so first thing first you what you have to do is actually go to the steam table at 0 0.4 just check the volume at saturated steam table as 0.4 just check the volume if it is greater than vf or less than vg so so what you can say like if it is in between vf and vg that means like we are inside the buffer dome so our volume which actually i have checked in there so it was inside the buffer dome so the state one is inside the buffer dome now going back to the thing the same thing uh, let me have another another state two as well which is 0 
at 0 0.4, just check the temperature, saturation temperature. If the given temperature is greater than the saturation temperature, so we are in the superheated condition. So yes, our state 2 was in a superheated condition and our state 1 was inside the vapor dome. And you can imagine like inside the vapor dome, we are moving in a constant pressure process. But yes, outside the vapor dome, the pressure would remain constant, but the temperature would be rising. So the, the graph would be moving something like this. So that means like work done would be equal to T V2 minus V1. So now let's say have a V1, which is actually over here, somewhere here. And we have got a V2, which is actually from, from steam table, superheated steam table. We can find V2, which is at 0 0.4 at 300 degrees centigrade. We have found it V2 over here. So that means like W would be equal to mass multiplied by. So that if we are multiplying with the mass, that means like we will not having a specific volume, but we will be have a specific water but we will be having a total water. So that means like V2 from the superheated minus V1, which was actually uh, uh, from, from there as well. From here as well, would be equal to the water. Now for the enthalpy side, uh, finding the enthalpy. H2 can be simply find by using the superheated steam table. So you just go to the superheated steam table. Let me let me clear it out so you do not have got any confusion in here. Uh, so superheated steam table, we have got 0 0.4, 0 0.4 megapascal. So if you can check in 0 0.4 megapascal, we have got volume here, enthalpy here, and entropy here. And at 300, so volume at 300 somewhere here. So, sorry, somewhere, yeah. So volume V2 is equal to 0 0.6549, and enthalpy is equal to 3.6701. 3.67.1, actually. So that means like the volume was 6.48 something and enthalpy H2 is equal to 6067.82. Now, what about the H1 itself? H1 is equal to, as it was inside the vapor tube, H1 is equal to, H1 is equal to HF plus X HF G. So in other words, if we, if you remember V1 is equal to Vf plus X Vf G. So at 0 0.4, at 0 0.4 in our saturated table, you would be finding Hf, we will be finding Hfg as well, but obviously we need X over here to find the value of H1. While in other equation of the volume, V1, we have got V1 already, which is 0 0.2. We have already got at Vf, which is at, at 0 0.4 megapascal. We have already got Vfg, which is actually 0 0.4614. So we find X from here, from this equation. Putting X in this equation, you can find the enthalpy at state 1 now. So now you have got both the enthalpy, enthalpy H1 and enthalpy H2. So you can simply put the enthalpy back in there and you can find the change in internal energy, sorry, change in heat would be equal to change in enthalpy. Somewhere here. This is the, uh, the second method, like if you are not looking for the enthalpy, but if you are looking for the change in internal energy and work done, so the equation would be equal to change in internal energy plus work done and the internal energy you can find from the tables if it is not there. So just use the book table, which is actually internal energy there. Um, and then obviously work done, which actually we have already found out somewhere. Yes, over here somewhere and put them and here. So you can imagine like work done from this equation and sorry, heat transfer from this equation and heat transfer from this equation. They are both the same. I hope you understand that one. Uh, if you have got any problem, just post it in a classroom and I would be able to answer. Thank you very much. Have a nice time.